we actually started in uh, 87 so yeah so things were very different back then uh, I was still obviously animating uh, in 2d you know doing hand-drawn animation back then um, we're still using the down shooters where you know you can like use them with a plane camera to kind of shoot your animation so you basically lay out the lay out the play paper flat on this thing and then you take a picture with the camera kind of facing down change the paper put another paper take another picture change the paper do that for you know every 24 frames you you're supposed to have like one uh, different drawing for each one of those so uh very different than today today we're all uh all the movies that we're making at disney now for the most part are make are made in computers so uh all that stuff is a lot more um uh it's a little more streamlined and uh, done with uh, characters they're built inside the computer they almost look like sculptures inside the computer right uh, that you get to manipulate and move them around so um, uh, I think that was the biggest uh, change that happened uh, around that kind of took place around uh, uh, over time but mostly around the 2000 99 2000 2001 where things really took like a big shift to, into computer animation I always felt like a little kid, you know, because <laughs> it's so different than anything. I mean, you drive, I drive every day, right, to go to work. Uh, sometimes I ride my bicycle, but you're always sort of like interacting with cars. But when you're uh, uh, here, you know, uh, interacting with pro people that do professionally and, and can kind of take these cars to as far as they can go, uh, it's, a, a, it's a completely different experience. Um, and I felt like, uh, yeah, I just felt like a little kid, you know, feel like I had just finished uh, like some amazing ride at Disneyland or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, so when you were working with Jeremy, what did you find out with the animation that had to be tweaked the most after mm -hmm. working with him than you previously mm -hmm. thought you would have to change? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of things. Um, I guess one of the things that we can talk about is how uh, uh, how characters were interacting with the car, how they were uh, making sure the cars were uh, were. Uh, uh, we needed to make sure the cars were doing the right thing in the, in the sequence, but we also needed to uh, get the characters to uh, interact with the character with the car in a way that was believable. That was something that sometimes we just don't pay that much attention to when you're animating because it looks like you can just do anything and people believe it. Um, but for that sequence, we wanted to do it correctly because it was very specific about how you how you hold the steering wheel, you know, what kind of angle you hold the steering wheel, what kind of angle your arm should be so you can get more uh, 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 control over over the car, right? Uh, when you shift gears, when you brake, when do you when you accelerate, when do you actually take that turn, uh, when do you actually come out of that turn so your car can come out of it as fast as possible. Um, all, all of that technical stuff, we, I guess, you know, for lack of a better word, we kind of tend to just kind of cheat a little bit, uh, but we wanted to do it proper, and that kind of made the film a lot more believable, I think. It's interesting, because you showed us the clip earlier of your presentation, you know, yeah. at a raceway, so it paid more attention to how the characters are yeah. using their hands, like it was so natural, and mm -hmm. I just realized that the, really the attention to detail that you captured mm -hmm. so well. Mm -hmm. The, the two things are true. Uh, first, we have obviously uh, our team of people designing and building our characters and, and uh, our vehicles and our props and all that stuff. Uh, so there's a group of people that design and there's a different group that builds. Um, but we all work together and there's a huge collaboration between us. So at first, for instance, when they were building uh, Vanellope's car, right? The, the, uh, when they were building her car, there was very, uh, uh, there was design aspects to it that needed to be there to carry the story that Rich and Phil had envisioned. Uh, when we placed Vanellope inside the car, when we actually got into animation and placed Vanellope inside the car, we realized that the scale wasn't really exactly the best for, the, for her to be inside that car. So we, we asked our design team if we could uh, change the design a little bit to, so she felt more uh, natural inside that car, right? Uh, same thing with Shank's car when we, when we first built her car. Uh, it looked very much the same, but th where things were were not exactly as close to her hand as they could be. Uh, where the where the handbrake was, you know, we wanted to change that to look a little bit more like the uh, like you see on, on proper 
on proper uh, uh, stunt cars. Um, so there was a lot of back and forth between the departments to make sure everybody got a say into what the final product looked like. Mm -hmm. Which must have been a challenge. Yeah. Their essence it was a dream. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, how did you balance or attack that aspect of it of making them mm -hmm. more modernized but still keeping their mm -hmm. essence of what they were for? Yeah. Before? It's, uh, it's ah, man, that sequence when we was conceived by the director very early on, right? Uh, and Pam uh, Riven, who's one of the writers, you know, I think was. Uh, one of her big contributions to the to the film, amongst other things, um, but that was there very early. And when when we saw the screening, you know, saw in storyboards, I was uh, I was laughing so much. But I was just hoping that that would stay in the film. That's all I wanted. I want that to stay in the film because sometimes early screenings, you know, uh, the story kind of changes and things get you know move and they change and they get cut. Sometimes uh, I was just crossing my fingers that that would stay there. Um, once the you know, the directors felt like, okay, this is safe. Uh, you guys can start uh, playing around and kind of start building these things. We, we, even though we created all those characters, uh, except obviously Brave, which was a Pixar character, but we had created all these characters, but we wanted to make sure we capture the essence of uh, each one of them in a way that, that was very specific to how they were animating the original films. Uh, each one of them went through uh, uh, a journey of, us uh, obviously watching those films to make sure we capture what we needed. Uh, talking with the actresses, the, uh, a lot of them came into uh, to the department and spent uh, a good hour talking with uh, the animators about their vision for it, um, uh, what drove uh, uh, their, uh, uh, what inspired them, what drove them uh, to uh, to portray those characters and um, how they moved. You know. Um, things that were important. We asked each one of them, like, is there a moment in the film that you think it's so uh, specific that you wish you'd see in, in, in Ralph, you know? And then we tried to incorporate that into the film. Um, we also went to the park to talk with our princesses at the park to see, because they also, they also watched the movie and they picked things that, that make uh, 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 their version of, of the princesses very relatable to, to people. So we did that. We had uh, uh, one of their princess trainers come into the building, talk to us uh, after that. So she came in and talked a lot more about specifics and how did, how did they train, what did they do, how did they get into that frame of mind. Um, along the way, as we're building, obviously, we're uh, making sure the design was very specific and a nod to, 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 to the original films. We had one of our animators, uh, Mark Henn. He actually uh, supervised five uh, of the princesses, and he was every day on the floor kind of helping us uh, with notes, with drawovers, uh, making sure everybody kind of got a chance to uh, uh, add something to, 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 to these characters, but also uh, keep them very believable to who they were. Uh, my partner, Kira Litamaki, who's the co-head of animation on the film with me, uh, she is the biggest, most amazing uh, resource as far as princess go. Like there's, I don't think there's a person in the world who'll know any more than she does. So, uh, uh, and when we partnered up to, to work on this film, obviously we didn't know this movie, it was, uh, the princess were going to be there, but uh, she was the biggest asset we could possibly ask to uh, be on the film. We're, we're doing numbers Tell today. Doing today is math, it's math at the track. <laughs> Um, we're sliding car some cars around, and so some of it is just sliding straight ahead, but in the movie you see, a you see some 90s, you see some 180s, you see some reverse 180s, or reverse spins, you see a lot of drifting, so all of those we're putting together out here, and we've even linked them all together to make a series where we're doing each of those gags uh, is involved in a little sequence that, we that you do, so you can see how it all links together, which is exactly what, uh, what happened with Vanellope, you know, there's uh, uh, there's a drift into a 180, to reverse 270 drift into another drift into a 90.
So I had a few questions for you, and thanks for taking the time. Yeah, um, absolutely. So I wanted to know what your process, what, what your involvement in this was like, with the process for you with the film. I got contacted to come in and, and work on a show, I wasn't sure what it was, um, as not, I, kind of in a consultation kind of role. It wasn't, it wasn't a very big role, but it was a very enjoyable role. And I had not seen the first movie. When, when I thought what the project was, I had not seen the first movie. So then we went and watched the first one. And it was, it was very entertaining. I really enjoyed it. And the driving stuff, even in that one, was great. And I say even in that one because the driving in that one was kind of in a... Kind of a... Like a cartoonish kind of video game. It wasn't a realistic, per se, video game. And I still thought it was really good. So when I found out about the second one, where they told me about it, and we were uh, working on it, I... It was, very, it was very interesting to me to, to see how you had not only the candy, there's a little bit of Candy Crush racing, but mm -hmm. then Slaughterhouse. Yeah. Or Slaughter, I'm sorry. So you had the Candy Crush racing, and then you had Slaughter Race. And Slaughter Race is very, it's grounded in reality, and that's what they brought me in for, was to just give some feedback and some input, uh, kind of some ideas. They didn't really need the ideas. Those guys have all the, they have great ideas already. They just wanted some of the nuances of the cars, what it would do, what it wouldn't do, what 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 something we could add that might that might sell the realism of it right cool um so baby driver and wreck it ralph or ralph breaks the internet are very different films what were those experiences like differing for you well they were a lot different um obviously one a little more animated than the other but with with baby driver it was um i was involved kind of from the beginning, not from the very beginning, but very early on I was I was brought on board. So I got to be pretty pretty involved with the developing of the gags and the stunt, we call them gags, but the stunts, um, setting them up. Uh, we'd go to locations and figure out what, what would work here. Well, we had planned to do this, but this doesn't really work, but we could do this instead. So in, in, in a sense, I got to be more involved with the developing of the actual ideas. With Wreck-It Ralph, it was fun because I also got to develop some of the ideas. But with with that, you kind of with, with the animated, what they were really looking for was what would it do, and what what could we do again that would make this look more realistic. So you take some of the things that you learn, the experience that you have. You go, well, I've done this before. When the car did this, we didn't expect it to do this, but it hit here, and instead of going up, it went sideways. So you can kind of take some of those lessons that you learn from like Baby Driver, yeah. and you, you can apply it to an animated film like Wreck-It Ralph. Awesome. Um, for the animators, what do you think was the most important aspect that they took away from their interaction with you? Well, <laughs> probably glad that I was finally gone so you get back to work <laughs> because I, I think what they do is super interesting and it's fascinating they can sit there in front of a computer and by moving their little fingers over the course of a couple hours, over a couple of days, they can create these you know masterpieces. So I really enjoyed being there and working with them. Um, just by nature of me doing this for almost 20 years now, you pick up a lot of the little nuances and the little details. And, and I'm, to a fault, very observant and very curious. So I, I analyze things. Um, I probably suffer from paralysis by analysis more often than I should. But what that means is I, because I watch cars a lot when they do things, because I'm trying to figure out why they're doing that and why wouldn't it do that? And how would I make it do this instead of that? because I, I, I really intentionally pay attention, I can apply, I, I can take those little details and pass them along to the animators and say, hey, this is really close, but if you did this, it would be spot on. That's awesome. Um, so you've done stunts in both film and television. How are those different for you? For doing stunts for film and television, they're very, very similar. There's no real difference in in the actual performing of the, of the stunts, of the gags, of the driving. You know, you're, you're in whatever car they give you and you gotta do this, wherever the location is that they have. Um, one difference though is typically, and it's kind of changing, but typically with features, you have more money. So if you're gonna do a gag or a, a sequence, they will, they will throw, they're willing to throw more money at the car. If you need, if you ask for a car with an, with an e-brake and a limited slip rear end, there's a good chance you'll get it. On TV, you get whatever shows up and usually it has neither. So with 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 features, you typically have more resources uh, available, but it's kind of changing. TV seems to be progressing and evolving and 
Um, so there's a lot of money in TV as well. Uh, but another difference with, with, with TV is TV tends to move a little faster. Mm-hmm. You get in, you do a take, you do two takes, you move on, and, and it's you, you shoot it, you bang the shots out, and you just move on down the list. With features, they really they really will nurse and massage the shots, or, or the, the tendency is there at least, mm-hmm. to really try to, to, to drill down on these shots to get them as good as you, as you can. With TV, it's 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 kind of you, you get what you got, you do the best you can. Right. If we got it, we got it. If we don't, we'll move on. Yeah. Cool. Um, what is something you've never done with stunts that you wanted to do? Uh, retire. <laughs> retire. <laughs> Hope someday, someday that'll happen. Um, no, I mean I I, I want to retire. That's yeah, the plan. I hope I. That's uh, the goal. <laughs> I hope on my own um, uh, on my own terms. But as far as gags go. You know, there was a time not too long ago when I said, man, I'd like to, you know, do a, crash a car. And then I start crashing cars. And I like to do this kind of a crash. And, and luckily, I've been put in positions and, and surrounded by people and, and on projects that embrace, like, thinking outside the box, a little more creativity. So you come up with these ideas that, you know, I don't know. I mean, this seems out there. This would take a lot of money, a lot of prep, a lot of, a lot of time. And it might not even work. But luckily, all the things have kind of come together on several occasions for me to be able to do some pretty cool things. So I don't really have anything left on the list of, of gags to do, but being a consummate perfectionist, mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what it is. If they just want me to pull up to the camera and stop, that that challenge will, I will nurse that challenge until until they get tired of shooting it and we move on to the next shot. So. Uh, what were some of the initial suggestions that the animation team pitched to you that didn't kind of pan out when you showed them the logistics of it? Mm, that's interesting. There was a, there's a, there's a sequence in the movie when Vanellope is being chased by Shank and there's an obstacle. Um, it's going into the tunnel and they weren't sure how to get her through it because they want to keep it realistic. And they and then and she's supposed to I believe at the time and it might have changed I, I could be wrong on this but I think at the time the idea was that she loses Shank or maybe it, it might have always been that she glitches through it but then they got to come up with a way for Shank to make it whatever the case is they wanted Shank to get through the um, through the tunnel but they didn't know how and so they had some ideas that I mean they're very interesting and they're really creative but they weren't pra- they weren't practical at all and they knew it so it wasn't it wasn't news to them but that was one area where they showed me oh, I, I know that there's something that we could do something a little different so we came up with some different ideas um, and a lot of ideas got thrown out and for different reasons some were, were better than others but um, what they came up with uh, worked really well thank you so much for your time I really yeah, appreciate it, it was nice talking to you likewise thank you thank you